You're listening to Bark and Wag's 15-Minute Vet Talk. Each week, your host, Polly Requa, interviews veterinarians and individuals in the pet industry from across the nation answering pet questions. Bark and Wag podcast is produced weekly for your enjoyment, and show notes can be found at BarkandWag.com under the podcast tab. That's B-A-R-K-N-W-A-G.com. Please remember to subscribe to Bark and Wag 15-Minute Vet Talk. Thank you for listening to Bark and Wag 15-Minute Vet Talk. Bark and Wag is dedicated to protecting our dogs through advocacy, education, and supporting like-minded dog lovers by selling custom pet products, saving lives by selling collars, scrunchies, and swag. Please check out Bark and Wag's website, BarkinWag.com. That's B-A-R-K-N-W-A-G.com to see the awesome merchandise. Bark and Wag collars and leashes, collar covers, and decorative bandanas are perfect for your pooch. For the owner of the house, we have t-shirts, sweatshirts, long sleeve shirts, hats, and even coasters. We are expanding monthly, so be sure to check back. We love pooch ideas for podcasts and merchandise too, so send an email to polly at barkinwag.com with your suggestions. Welcome to Bark and Wag 15 Minute Vet Talk. I'm your host, Polly Requa. Today we're talking to Dr. Laura Brown, owner of Green Tree Animal Hospital in Libertyville, Illinois. Welcome, Laura. Hi, Polly. Thanks for having me. Yes, thank you for coming back on the podcast. Today we're going to talk about coming up is the 4th of July. And I have had big dogs, little dogs. They all do not like fireworks and the noise and the excitement. And so I just wanted to find out how you... Oh, and one thing about living in Colorado. So we have a firework ban. So because of the forest fires... All of the towns are not allowed, or they've decided on their own, not to have fireworks. That's a good idea. Yep. So on our end, my dogs love living here. (laughs) (laughs) Right. But for everyone else, I wanted to find out how you can protect your dog and, you know, what suggestions you have. So mostly I think there, you know, there's a lot of dogs that are really, really scared and fearful by the noise, by the vibration. And, you know, especially people that do home fireworks. So the neighborhoods are popping and, and stuff like that. So similar to thunderstorm anxiety, um, a lot of dogs around this time of the year have these fearful anxiety episodes. So a couple easy things to do. Um, would be, you know, the, the fireworks are coming. Maybe the dog can can be in a safe place that they like at home. Like maybe maybe they like their crate. That's their little den. And you could put some music on, um, some white noise or something. You can, you know, if they have a place they, they kind of like to hide in your bedroom or whatever, close the windows, close the blinds, turn on some music, turn on some white noise to just sort of distract them from that. Sometimes that works. Um, You just got to do it kind of ahead of time. But some dogs, they're just so fearful and they're shaking in their boots and, you know, panting and drooling and pacing and, you know, obvious signs of significant anxiety that they need to have some form of anti-anxiety treatment. Okay. So that could be as, you know, benign as there are some now some new holistic not medicinal forms of treatment for anxiety. Like one thing is it's a dog pheromone called Adaptil, A-D-A-P-T-I-L. It comes in a spray, it comes in a plug-in, it comes in wipes. And so plugging that in or spraying that in the environment, the dogs can smell it. You can't smell it, but it's a calming pheromone. So sometimes they'll get some benefit from that. And especially if you put them in a space that they're normally used to and use that as well, that may be enough. I always like to tell people to use that in your, like spray it in your car if you're traveling and they're not a big fan of traveling. We actually spray it on our, on bandanas to give to the owners and have them put the bandanas on the dogs the second they walk in our door at the clinic. So they can maybe take a deep breath and not be as anxious about being at the doctor. So it's not 100%, but some dogs that are just a little bit nervous, that's all they need. The next step up is there's a couple forms of oral medication that you mix in their food. One's a calming probiotic made by Purina and another product called Zyclean. 
And that's a capsule, more more like a medication. And they're, they work in, in the dog's food to sort of help their, in, the probiotic helps in their GI tract to release some of those calming type hormone things. And the Zyclean works like it has some tryptophan and some casein in it, just like eating a turkey sandwich and having a warm glass of milk. You know how everybody falls asleep on turkey day sure. after that. Yeah. Um, so that those are things that dogs can eat, but they have to eat them. You have to kind of start that a few days slash a week or two ahead of time for their body to get that in their system and have some benefit from that. So it's not as immediate. And so I know that we had a golden retriever named Lily, who was one of the best dogs ever. And we would come to Green Tree Animal Hospital, and she actually got a prescription that put her to sleep. Yeah. So then the next level up is um, actually medication. And so we are using two different anti-anxiety medications now. One is Alprazolam, um, which is Xanax. Okay. And the other one is Trazodone. And those both are anti-anxiety drugs. And so based on your dog's weight and size, we figure out what medication, what size milligrams they should take. And we can prescribe that for you to give a couple, three hours ahead of desired effect. So let's say, and so therefore some people need to be given that around two or three days during the fireworks stuff, right? Yeah, like yeah, mm-hmm. not just on the fourth, but yeah, people start mm-hmm. doing it at the night on the night of the third. So if the fireworks start at 6 PM, you should be giving your dog medication at four, okay. maybe even sooner than that. So that it has full effect because if they are, if you try medication when they're already worked up and anxious, it does not work as well. Okay. Okay. But uh, anti-anxiety drugs and like in people, they're not supposed to knock you out. They're just supposed to make you calmer. But right. because you're calmer, you may sleep. Right. Yeah. Blare the radio. Yeah. And then um, give the drug. Yeah. Did it yeah. work? Oh, yeah. Yeah. We never, we really never had problems, but, you know, she would try to eat the door, you know? Yeah. I mean, so we definitely had issues prior to the magic drug. And she was sleepy, but not like yeah. knocked out. Like yeah, she could yeah. walk around and, yeah, and then she, in the morning she woke up and, you know, was fine. Yeah. Yeah. So those situational anxiety medications we also use for sometimes for thunderstorm anxiety too. It's just, you always... They all work better when you give them a couple hours ahead of time. Yeah, and one thing I want to say is don't bring your dog down to the park to see the fireworks. I mean, I have gone up and said to owners to go take your dog home. I mean, you know, when the dog is trying to get out of their collar, I mean, it's just horrible. Why would you subject your dog to that? Right, and maybe, you know, especially for, you know, first-time pet owners and that's their first year their dogs are you know old enough to do something like that they don't think that that might happen but once it happens like the closer you get the louder it is you know the lights the firework lights are bright there's lots of people that's a really really anxious time for dogs and so once you introduce them to that and have a bad experience it's never getting better yeah exactly ever. exactly it's going to like make for worse behaviors down the road right right well, and then it's, they have that noise fear on multiple things. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So. You know, yeah. So. All right. Well, I hope you and your family have a happy 4th. And Thank you. You too. It is coming. It doesn't feel like it's going to be the 4th of July with the weather very soon, but <laughs> hopefully it will be. Yes. And uh, we look forward to having you back on the podcast. Thanks, Polly. Thank you. Talk to you later. Thank you for listening to Bark and Wag's 15-Minute Vet Talk. If you like what you just heard, we hope you'll pass along our web address, www.barkandwag.com, to your friends and other pet owners. Have a pressing question for a veterinarian? Ask your question at barkandwag.com under the podcast tab. This has been a KFR production. Join us next time for another edition of Bark and Wag's 15-Minute Vet Talk.